G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm doing a management series on a new species, Tetragonula sapiens. So in this episode, my plan of attack, if you like, part one. This is the beehive as I scan round it. And you will notice it is a concrete block. And of course they occupy one half of it. There's a board at the bottom here. And of course a besser block on the top. And somebody's kindly drilled a little hole right in the very block that goes into the centre. Now, very important thing about when you relocate bees from one area to another. Notice what this guy has done. Properly taped it up. Now the taping up is not to stop pests coming in. The taping up is very important because it came from by car four hours away from Cairns. Vibrations in transport will loosen the most tightest of fittings. So if these joins here can work loose. There and there. And you don't want it working loose. So when you transport native bees, make sure you tape up the hive so that any vibrations don't loosen it. With this hive too, when you transport any bees, always cover this opening, the thing with mesh, not tape it over. They breathe through that opening. If you tape it up, they will suffocate and die. That said, this is the hive. What am I planning to do? Well, rather simple. First step is I've got to find it a new home. And this will be its new home, but not here because this is occupied. Yes, there are Hocking's eye bees in here. This is the foam plastic hive. But what does this hive have as an advantage for the sapiens? Well, this hive, firstly, is made of foam. Foam is a good insulator. If you watch the insulation, oh sorry, if you watch the introduction insulation, Jesus, not even beer o'clock. If you watch the induction or the introduction of the uh, sapiens, I talk about how they have no tolerance to cold whatsoever. Zero. So you want a good insulated hive. And of course, a styrofoam hive like this, with all this insulation on it, perfect. Keeps any cold weather out. The second thing you want is a hive body of only about three to four litres I mentioned. Guess what the size of this is? three to four litres. So it has all the attributes I need to keep my sapiens alive. So first job's going to be this week transferring the Hocking's eyes, these little blighters down here that are happily living, from this hive to that hive. And then this hive will be free for the sapiens. Now I mentioned in the introduction that sapiens have got to be protected from the weather, so it's on the northern side this location, uh, protect it from the southerlies and the cold, but they also like it dark and shady. And of course, if you look outside the hive, it's under a heap of trees, it's shady, it's going to insulate it from both heat waves and keep a nice dark environment. So this is the location where the sapiens hive will go. So then we talk about what am I going to do with this hive? Well, in a besser block, you'll see there's two compartments. One, two, and of course one's occupied, but it has a tapering edge. This top edge here is slightly narrower. Now what I should be able to do in theory, and it's going to be in theory, is I should be able to get a knife into here, just cut around the edge, and lift the block off and expose the hive and then I can split it and put it into the new hive. But do I do that straight away? And the answer is no. This has only just arrived today and already the, uh, and even though the bees have found their way and are busy doing 
everything bees should be doing. And there's plenty of foraging going on. We'll get around here out of their way. They're bloody flying all over the place. Even though they're doing everything buzzy bees should be doing, they've got to properly orientate themselves to the new location. Why do they need to properly orientate themselves? Firstly, they've got to repair any damage on the inside of that hive. And you can see already they're cleaning up the mess because they've been closed up for a day or two. Secondly, they've got to make sure they have a good food supply because once I rip this nest open, I'm going to cause a lot of damage. So they've got to be able to find resins, pollen and honey reliably to repair any damage. So you don't rip into it now or even a day's time. Give it five days to a week for this hive to properly settle in to acclimatise. I've got three options. I've got to have a look inside here, lifting that lid off. If the hive is, say, whoops, get back a bit, half full, I'm going to remove all the hive and put it into the foam box. If this hive is full, I'm left with either trying an induction or I will more than likely do a brood lift and get two hives out of this single hive. At the moment, I'm suspecting it's quite full because the activity, and this is only a bit after nine in the morning, is bloody fantastic. You know, for a, considering it's just been opened up, I've got bees buzzing everywhere. So at the moment, I'm very pleased with this. I'm suspecting if it's full, I'm going to try the brood lift method as my first experiment to start another hive off. And I suspect it will be successful. But it will all depend on what goes on here. Other than that, um, I don't think there's much more to say. I'm just talking for the sake of talking, which is probably very boring to you. So we'll close it off there. That's the plan. In the next day or two, I will be transferring the Hocking's Eye out of the foam box. So that's freeze it up. I'll be looking under that lid to see what the condition of the bees are, how full it is. And depending on how full it is, I will either take the lot out or do a brood lift method of propagation.